Hello everyone. Welcome to lesson two of the introduction to quantum computing series. Um, last time we looked at uh, just uh, installing Qiskit and in today's lesson we're going to look at the Pauli X gate. So in today's lesson you will learn the following. Uh, what the Pauli X gate is, how it affects the qubit state when applied, and how to implement the gate in Qiskit. So what is the Pauli X gate? It's just a single qubit quantum logic gate. It's probably one of the simplest uh, quantum logic gates besides maybe the uh, identity gate. It performs a rotation of pi radians or 180 degrees around the X axis. And it can be represented uh, using the following uh, unitary matrix here. So this is just a simple uh, two by two matrix. You just have zero, one, one, zero. And you'll see why this matrix is very important. So now onto the uh, operation of the Pauli X gate. So we can see how the Pauli X gate actually affects the qubit by multiplying the qubit's uh, state, or more specifically the column vector associated with the uh, qubit state by the actual Pauli X gate uh, matrix. So for our first example, uh, we'll initialize a qubit to zero, and then all we need to do is multiply the associated column vector for that state by the Pauli X gate matrix. And so it's gonna look like something like this here. So here is our uh, Pauli X gate matrix here, and then here's the column vector associated with uh, the zero state. And we just multiply them together to see um, how the Pauli X gate will change that state. So we just do zero times one, and then we do plus one times zero, and then in the bottom row, you do one times one, and then you just do zero times zero. And then when you do that, uh, you'll get zero one. And the zero one uh, column vector is the one that represents uh, the one state. So because we started off with zero, it's flipped the qubit from zero to one. And that's what a 180 degree rotation will do if you first initialize the qubit to zero, because um, 180 degrees away from uh, zero is uh, one. So now for our second example, we'll initialize the qubit to uh, one instead. So what will the qubit state be after the poly X gate is applied? Well, all we need to do is multiply um, the poly X gate by the column vector. So we just do zero times zero uh, plus one times one, and then we'll do one times zero uh, plus zero times one. And then you'll see that we get one zero, and this is a column vector which represents zero. So this time it's flipped the qubit from one to zero. Okay, so here's the actual uh, Qiskit code to uh, implement a poly X gate. Now, more specifically, this implements a quantum circuit. And all it does is it applies a poly X gate to one qubit and then measures it and then sends it off to a external simulator on uh, IBM side. And then it uh, gets the uh, counts. So the first step is to import the necessary modules, which are here. So it's just quantum register, classical register, uh, circuit execute, IBM Q and job monitor. Uh, we're going to go through uh, all of these um, as they uh, come along in the code. The next step is to um, add this bit of code here called IBM Q .enable account. Now this basically holds the API key that we need to access uh, IBM's quantum devices and uh, simulators. Now to get the API key, you just need to create an account at uh, quantumcomputing.ibm.com and then all you do is go to your go to the dashboard and you'll see a uh, this here where the API token is and you just uh, click copy and then go back into your code and just paste it uh, into the function here and then there you go 
So the next thing we have to do is we have to specify the uh, provider. And in our case, we're going to set it to uh, IBM Q here. The next thing we have to do is we have to specify the uh, back end. Uh, the back end is just the target device we're going to run the circuit on. So in our case, we're going to use an IBM Q Chasm simulator, which is just a quantum simulator on IBM side. And the reason why we're going to use this is because it's much quicker than using a quantum device. Because with a quantum device, uh, there may be a, a queue that you have to wait in uh, before it actually runs your circuit. So it can take uh, quite a while. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to implement the quantum and the classical registers. So the first line here is where we implement the uh, quantum register, which we've just named a uh, queue. Now the quantum register holds our uh, qubit, and because we only require one qubit in our circuit, uh, we set the number of qubits uh, to one. The next line of code implements the classical register, and for that we only need uh, one bit, because we're only going to be measuring one qubit. Next, we have to initialize the actual quantum circuit. And we do that using this line of code here, where we just pass in the quantum register and the uh, classical register here. And then after that, we implement the actual polyx gate. And to do that, we just use this code here, uh, circuit.x uh, q0. The x part means we're implementing a uh, polyx gate. And the q0 is our target qubit. Um, the first uh, qubit in the register is always has the index of zero, so it's q0 for our qubit. And then after that, we have to measure the qubit to uh, get its uh, state. So we do that using this code here, circuit.measure uh, qc. Next, we uh, print the circuit, and this allows us to actually see what the circuit looks like. And then after that, now that we've got our circuit done, we can send the circuit off to the uh, backend device. So we do that using this code here. Uh, job equals execute circuit backend uh, shots equal 8192. So the circuit is our um, actual circuit. Our backend is the uh, target device we want to send the circuit to. And the shots are the uh, amount of times you want to run that circuit on that device. So in our case, we're going to run the circuit 8192 times. Next, we implement uh, the job monitor, and this allows us to monitor the, uh, the job as it's been executed uh, on the device. After the uh, job has been executed, we can get the counts back uh, with this code here, uh, counts equals job.result.getCounts. And after that, we can finally print the counts. And then that is uh, all the code. OK, now that we've gone through the code, I can actually show you what happens when you run it. So I just need to type in uh, the program here. So that's xgate.py. And now I should actually create the circuit and send it off to the uh, device, and we'll get the results back. So here's the circuit here, poly gate into the uh, measurement. And now the job monitor saying it's being validated. And here's our results, we've got it back already. So these are results here. This basically tells us that um, the total number of counts for uh, one is 8,192. Now the reason for that is because originally our qubit was initialized to zero. Um, but because we implemented the poly x gate, that has flipped a qubit from 0 to 1. So that's why we're getting that many uh, counts for 1 there. So thank you very much. I hope um, this lesson's been very uh, enlightening. Um, in the next lesson, we'll actually look at how to create a quantum superposition uh, using the uh, Hadamard gate. So I'll see you then. OK, so the next thing we have to do is we have to implement the quantum and the classical registers. So the first line here is where we implement the uh, quantum register, which we've just named uh, Q. 
Now the quantum register holds our uh, qubit and because we only require one qubit in our circuit, uh, we set the number of qubits uh, to one. The next line of code implements a classical register and for that we only need uh, one bit because we're only going to be measuring one qubit. Uh, 